How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Kind of one of those days I don't have much of an agenda. Um, went to Marathon two weeks ago. Did a little bit of filming up there. Had a great time. Um, we went to Texas for a week, and now I'm back in Key West. And Quite honestly, I just need some salt in my life, so... I don't know what I have planned today. I have, I'll tell you what I brought with me. I've got three spinning reels. I've got a smaller 10 foot net. Um, in the cooler, I've got a couple packs of frozen shrimp. And I'm kind of just poking around. These are the wrong ones. I'm just poking around, see if I can find some live bait. Maybe live bait some snappers or, I don't know. Like I guess I don't really have much of an agenda. Weather is nice and a little nurse shark. Weather's beautiful, so I figured I'd bring you along. So all I'm doing here is kind of driving in and out of these mangrove islands up on the flats and whatnot. I'm looking for pilchards. Um, I've used these quite a bit before. They're one of the kind of the go-to baits down here. We're kind of coming up on winter time. The temperature's barely starting to drop, and we're starting to see some of that northeast wind. So. I know that my days on the Ginu Adventures are limited. During the winter time, it's a lot harder to get this thing out because the wind's always blowing, but um, that's the gist of what I'm doing. There's no real secret to finding bait other than staying on top of them or coming out here and searching. So I'm just, like I said, just kind of drifting in and around these islands. See what we can come up with. I just found the mother load of pilchards and I didn't have my net ready. So I shut the motor off. They went back that way. Um, I shut the motor off as to hopefully not spook them, but I'm gonna get the net loaded and see if we can get a few of those. I honestly need to hit the corner of that school because if I would have hit the top of it, I'd have had way too many. So the net I brought, it's just a small one. I actually don't have my little fine mesh um, 3 16 net. This is a 3 8 Typically good for most size baits, but it's just a 10 footer. The 12 footer is kind of hard to throw off the little boat. Oh my gosh. Gotta show you guys this before I throw this. This is wild. This was literally dumb luck. I've never even caught bait here. I just fished here one time. Look at them all. The only thing I don't like is they look like sand key pilchards, which are the ones that are more delicate. They don't stay alive as long. So I'm gonna try and hit just the corner of the school because I don't want a ton of them. It's actually almost perfect. I really don't want to hit the whole school here. Yeah, they're 
sand keys. That's what I was worried about. Like I said, sand keys are great bait. They just, they don't stay alive as long. Maybe try and get one more throw. too hard that time. I'm going to lift this horn up. Keep that net open. There you go. Now most of them were able to swim out. They didn't move that time when I threw it. They sat still. about two dozen in there hopefully we don't need more than that um, and this school seems pretty comfortable so I'm, I'm confident if I had to come back and catch more I could so let's go fishing just came and kind of greeted me here. I see some of them down there. Maybe we'll nestle up in here. So I bumped up just a hair from my normal jig size. Um, you watch the channel same old song and dance I've got I think this is 20 pound fluorocarbon may have to scale down to 15 but just a little jig head the reason I went a little bigger is because these baits are three four inches um, so I want the jig head to be enough to make them kind of have to fight it a little bit you can see that's about our average About the size of our average bait and again this is a sand key pilchard different a little different than a normal pilchard the biggest difference is got a little bit of yellow right there on the head and they don't last as long very delicate but they will get eaten just the same and all these mangroves are Barracuda was chewing on it. You can see him. Barracuda was chewing on it and spit it out, and a mangrove came and grabbed it and popped it. What's wild is it's so clear. I can watch these things eat it. Thank <laughs> you. 
probably legal, but just looking for a little bigger. Cuda ate it. I'm not rigged for a barracuda. I'm rigged for a snapper. So not much luck at the first spot. A lot of a lot of nice mangroves, just barracudas kept eating everything, so. beauty. If you know me, you know I love my mangroves. And a lot of times I'll take, gut them and take those intestines and give them back to the locals from the spot that I'm taking fish from. Some baby cormorants over there, you can hear them. Just walking. I like to, if I can, get it up under, there's like little ledges under the mangroves. I feel like they're a little more inclined to eat um, when they're kind of near that structure, they feel comfortable. your finger when you're pulling that out. It's another beauty. Take those all day. Hopefully that live well is not too loud. The only thing about this boat, the live well's right where I mount the camera. I'll hook you into the sun, he's got the boogie on him. He's fired up. <laughs> I kid you not. I did not catch a fish. Oops. I did not catch a fish in between three keepers. The first spot. I didn't catch a single keeper in this spot. It's been three keepers right in a row. Love it. So I pulled three keepers off here. Um, 
a couple of shorts when the camera was off but i think that's plenty from this spot cool little find i, I can't remember if i said it i have not fished this one before um so i'm gonna keep moving i know i've got dinner covered i wouldn't mind having another two i can have five snappers um that way we got fish for the week but um maybe explore a little bit see if we can find something new See, it's real shallow getting in here. Kind of come in kind of quiet, but you can also see there's moving water. So I've got a good flow, lots of debris. A lot of this weed is from, um, and grass is from the hurricane still. But it gets nice and deep right here, a little bit of structure. Water's pouring out right there. And we'll toss a bait in. Check it out. Lots of little mangroves coming out from under there to greet me. Any time on that one. Lots of small ones, so I'll try a bigger bait. Second bait in the water. Some days you just can't go wrong. Some days you can't go right. That's a beauty. That's a almost 15. 15 and a half? Yeah, 15. Call it 1.5. Got one nice one there when we first pulled up, and then uh, got pretty quiet, so I think we'll move along. running water right here nice and deep see nice little ledges water's flowing just gotta watch my prop on that thing let's check it out to give up. Right when I 
was about to give up. A 13. I will take it. That is number five. Drop the old camera. I can get him way down in there. Some ice in that belly. Make sure they're nice and cold. done out here pretty cool day um i'm gonna get back and have probably those snapper carcasses for lunch use the fillets this week found a couple new spots all in all a great day i'll see you back at the house I just got done unloading a few minutes ago. And I kid you not, it was beautiful. And this storm, literally, I watched the radar, started right on top of the house and just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It's been raining torrentially for about an hour and a half. Quite honestly, it's still pretty magical back here, even when it rains. Just me in the kitchen tonight, no sous chef. Madeline is under the weather. <laughs> or in the weather. I don't know. Uh, but we did the racks, do these quite a bit. Um, but tonight we're actually going to make some tacos with them. So I'm just going to show you, I'm going to break all these apart. I'll kind of tell you through, I'll show breaking them down and then tell you just olive oil blackening. Made a little corn salsa, um, grilled corn, cilantro, a little chipotle mayo, and some. What's the white cheese, crumbly? Queso fresco. Queso fresco. Got a little bit of pickled onions, lettuce, cilantro lettuce, and some um, brown tortillas. But I'll show you how much meat we pull off. This is five mangrove snapper carcasses from today. I'll show you how much meat we get off them. All right. So I could get a little more picky in there. I just was trying to do this quickly, but there we are. Not a mountain of meat, but definitely enough to make some black and snappa tacos. I can't remember if I said it. You can grill these. I just did them in the oven, eight to 10 minutes. Um, and then broil them for the last 
two. A little cilantro. <coughs> kind of just making it up as I go here. And Will got me on these pickled onions, man. I feel like we should just have a batch of pickled onions running at all times. So there we are. Tired, babe? Babe, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> She's been poopy all day. That's why I've been playing outside trying not to get sick. <laughs> There's our taco. Looks nice. The pickled, pickled onion with the corn salsa is a nice touch. Just a little bit. That's actually really good. I haven't done that one before. Mm-mm-mm. Give that a try. And these racks, I'm being redundant. You get on the bigger snapper, muttons, um, red snapper, even groupers. You grill those entire racks, man, you get a ton of meat off of them. Um, definitely worth the work, but that is all we've got on this one. I do appreciate you coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to get to them when I can. Um, that's all we've got. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, babe. Bye. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>